presentation of Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are the Fox. It's springtime at Fort Charlotte, and the Rays are hard at work prepping for the 2015 campaign. Tampa Bay enters the season with some new faces, highlighted by rookie skipper Kevin Cash. Today, right-hander Nathan Carnes goes to the hill, looking to lock down a spot in the Rays rotation. The Rays and the Twins start now. We welcome you to Spring Training Baseball Grapefruit League action from Charlotte County, Florida. A gorgeous day, clear skies, 79 degrees as the Tampa Bay Rays play host to the Minnesota Twins. Hi again, everyone, and welcome to our very first telecast of the spring with Todd Callis. I'm Dwayne Statz. So great to have you looking in. Well, the Rays known for great pitching depth, and that's going to be tested right off the start. In fact, when you look at what might figure to be the top three in the rotation now, not what they thought when this camp opened. You're right, Dwayne. Going into spring training, Jake Odorizzi thought, maybe I'll start that second series against the Miami Marlins. Nathan Carnes thinking, I might be a candidate for the fifth spot in rotation. Well, lo and behold, after some injuries, Odorizzi and Carnes could be in that opening series against the Baltimore Orioles with Chris, Chris Archer, the likely candidate to get the ball on opening day. We'll see Carnes this afternoon. He's been very good this spring in three starts. You can see his numbers through nine innings. And as a result of the injury sustained by Alex Cobb and Drew Smiley, Carnes has an opportunity maybe to find a spot himself in that rotation. Today, we'll hear from the new manager, Kevin Cash, throughout the afternoon. Resident of Baseball Ops, Matt Silverman, will stop by, along with pitching coach Jim Hickey. When we come back, Todd will chat with Steven Sousa, Jr., one of the new faces here in the Rays camp. Sports Park this afternoon, our first telecast of the season. The Rays take on the Minnesota Twins, one of the new faces in a Tampa Bay Rays jersey this year. Steven Souza Jr. joins us. Steven, first of all, two and a half weeks left until opening day. How's things feeling at the plate? How's the swing feeling? Uh, it's feeling great so far. You know, spring, you got to just kind of get used to the timing again, playing uh, more than uh, 30 minutes and, uh, you know, getting this, the swing feeling of, of barreling balls up again. You know, that's the most important thing, so... What, right now, it seems like you're trying to get pitches, work at bats, almost like the mindset you would take into opening day. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the more pitches you can see at this point, the better you're going to go at feeling into opening day. You know, it'd be nice, you know, for, for balls to fall in and get some hits, but it's more about how you're feeling and if you're barreling up, barreling up balls and if uh, 
You're on time for most pitches. So. A lot of innings in right field today in center. You played a little first base. How's the switching in positions going? It's nice. Uh, it, it's exactly what I wanted to do for first base is get uh, used to playing in games again. Um, right field, you know, I play that so much. Um, and center field I love. So switching around has been fun. Have fun in center today. Thanks, Steven. Thank you very much. All right, right now let's take it up to Dwayne Stats. All right, Todd, thank you very much. A day like today, a perfect day for baseball, and we'll have plenty of it for you as the Rays and the Minnesota Twins meet. The Rays have won six of their last seven. They come in with a mark of seven and six. Let's take a look at the Minnesota Twin lineup. Leading off at shortstop, they'll have Danny Santana. Jordan Schaefer will hit second and play right field. In center field, hitting third is Eddie Rosario. Kenny Vargas is at first base. He will be the cleanup man. Oswaldo Arcia in left field. Big power in the middle of this lineup for the Twins. Jose Martinez is at third. Chris Herman will do the catching. Eric Fryer of the DH hits eighth. And the second baseman, Doug Bernier, is hitting ninth. There's Nathan Carnes, 27-year-old right-hander. Barnes making his fourth appearance of the spring. Nine innings of work with just a couple of walks. He's given up one earned run in that stretch. So his numbers are good here in the early part of spring training. He initially came to camp with the idea to have to battle for the number five spot. But now with the, the late arrival of Alex Colome and then suffering pneumonia and the situations that we have already touched on, Involving Drew Smiley and now Alex Cobb. Suddenly Nathan Carnes finds himself in a position to perhaps be the third starter in the rotation. At least for the first time or two through the rotation. Let's take a look at the defensive setup for the Rays behind Carnes in the outfield. David DeJesus got to start at left. You see Stephen Sousa Jr. in center field. Jake Elmore who's played all over the place. This spring will be in right field and on the infield. Evan Longoria at third as Drupal Cabrera at short. Still to be determined if he's going to play second or short. You get the idea he would prefer shortstop. Logan Forsythe is at second base. On Francisco. Last time we saw him, he was in a Toronto Blue Jay uniform in camp with the Braves playing first base today. Kirk Casali will do the catching. For Nathan Carnes. And the new skipper, just 37 years old, Kevin Cash. Named the Rays manager in December of 2014. A couple of new skippers, Paul Molitor, in here directing the Minnesota Twins, and he was named. Manager of the Twins in early November. Molitor, only the third manager the Twins have had dating back to 1986. Tom Kelly took over from Ray Miller. They had Kelly, Ron Gardenhire, and now Paul Molitor. And we're ready to play baseball. Here's Santana. Santana, an outstanding young talent. You see his numbers last year in a little over 100 games in 319. And the first pitch from Carnes is in there. It's a called strike. We're underway. Paul Immel, the veteran umpire, working the plate. To the left side, Longoria out there. De Jesus closing in, and that ball is going to fall out of the reach. Cabrera cutting in between De Jesus and Longoria. No one could catch up to it, and the count is nothing in two. Ray's coming off a big day yesterday. Four home runs, including the first of the spring by Evan Longoria. Bats have been a little better. In fact, they've been much better recently for the Rays than they were early in the spring. Carnes comes in with that great fastball, as you know. We saw a little of him last year. He's a mid-90s. 95, sometimes 97 with his velocity. And an excellent curveball. And he strikes out Santana. So that's the first out. Let's check in with Todd, who will be situated around the dugout. One of the great things of spring training. Todd? 
Love the all-access down here, Dwayne. It is going to be enjoyable to be down here. We're going to talk to Kevin Cash in the fourth inning. Prior to that, Matt Silverman will join you in the booth. We'll hear from the owner who's in town, Steve Sternberg, in the bottom half of the second inning. Then down here, Nathan Carnes anticipating going five innings. We'll talk to him after his outing. Evan Longoria, a couple of at-bats. He's playing the third of four consecutive games. We'll talk to Longo as he ramps up his spring training activities, plus others. Back to you. All right, Schaefer. Jordan Schaefer fouls this one out of play. Well, that's a pretty good menu right there, so stay with us throughout the afternoon. Kind of a spring training approach to covering what's going on and, and that access in in-game access in the dugout. Pitch upstairs, and it's a 1-1 count. low two and one one of the things Carnes has been working on in particular has been the change up this spring and if he can develop that to the point where he has good command that would give him that great velocity fastball very impressive curveball and then that change up to go with it that will take the count to two two fastball right there well located Facing Jordan Schaefer. Schaefer out of Winter Haven High School. He made the Atlanta Braves Club last year out of spring training. Into right field. Elmore is there. Two gone. So the bases are empty for Eddie Rosario. Rosario developing through the Minnesota system out of Puerto Rico. Center field and Sousa who likes it out there waits to put it away in a one two three first for Nathan Carnes. Ten pitch hitting for Carnes. Braves coming into hit. Ahead in the bottom of the first inning, Nathan Carnes with an excellent top half of the first on the hill. Kevin Cash puts together this lineup for the spring afternoon. David DeJesus leads off, followed by Rene Rivera. He'll be doing most of the catching during the year, but he'll DH today. As Drupal Cabrera is in there, the switch hitting infielder at short, batting in front of Evan Longoria. Francisco at first, Forsyth at second base. There's Sousa in center field hitting seventh. Kirk Casali in there in the eighth spot with Jake Elmore batting ninth and playing right field for Kevin Cash. And the veteran, Ricky Nolasco, goes to the hill. Nolasco, a year ago, a big addition to the rotation. They gave him a lot of money. And they're hoping that he can give them quality innings this year. Finished 6 and 12 with a 538 earned run mark. A couple of physical issues during his season a year ago as well. And here is David DeJesus. Strike call. 
De Jesus has been in eight of the 14 games. The very seven and six they played to one tie here this spring. So one one count. Four for 20 on the spring for De Jesus. Near the second baseman. A sinking line drive, one away. Take a look at the defensive setup for Minnesota. Marcy in left, Rosario in center with Schaefer in right. The infield left side, Jose Martinez and Danny Santana. Bernier, we just saw him at second. Vargas at first, and Chris Herman. Does the catching. That's a strike call. Rivera, the designated hitter in this game, he has had a busy spring getting to know the raised pitchers. He spent a lot of time with them talking about. The various pitches that each member of the staff has and how he can help them. Ooh, that pitch. All strike and a tough breaking ball right there. Just caught the edge, 0 2. Talking about Rivera, Alex Cobb was saying the other day that Rivera came to him and asked him how he would like him to set up behind the plate. Cobb was amazed by that, that a catcher would change his whole approach behind the plate based on the preference of individual pitchers. They've already developed this great rapport with Rivera. Here's Cabrera. Here's Drubal Cabrera. The pitch is a strike. Oh, two. Cabrera spending most of his career, as you know, with the Cleveland Indians. And a brief stop in Washington last year. And a right. That'll hang up there for Schaefer. And a 1 2 3 first inning for the Minnesota right hander, Ricky Nolasco. Two an inning, no score.
Cobb right in the middle of your uh, screen. Originally uh, slated by Kevin Cash to be the opening day starter when the Rays open in about two and a half weeks. But pitching Tuesday in Clearwater against the Phillies pitched three excellent innings, but had a little tightness in that uh, forearm. And as a result, left early. And so he has joined Drew Smiley and Matt Moore. Three outstanding pitchers right there on the shelf to varying degrees. You can see Moore recovering from Tommy John surgery, a late June return expected for him. Drew Smiley played catch from about 100 feet yesterday, nursing that uh, tendonitis in his shoulder, and the Rays not taking any chances with Alex Cobb with the tendonitis in his right forearm. First pitch from Carnes is outside 1-0. Rays have a shift on for Vargas. And he takes another big cup right there. And when he swings, that's pretty much the norm for him. There's the shift. Broke his bat and fouls it the other way. One ball, two strikes. It'll be interesting. Uh, we're going to hear, as Todd mentioned, uh, from Jim Hickey later on today. We'll hear from Matt Silverman and uh, the Rays' new manager, Kevin Cash. And the topic, uh, I'm going to guess, with all three of those, at least in some part, will be centered around the health of the starting rotation. And what options the Rays have, where exactly they think those three pitchers are. As they anticipate their eventual return. This pitch there at Vargas out in front to strike him out. Barnes second strikeout. He's been working on a speed jump. To go with an excellent curveball. And really anything off speed and that combination of a curveball and a changeup with the high velocity fastball with consistent command would make a hitter's day very difficult. Arcia grabbed there by Cabrera had him shaded toward the middle and Arcia is out number two. Cabrera and they arrived at camp. Discussions with Kevin Cash about his position. He's willing to play second, willing to play short, wants to play one or the other. And you've got a very distinct idea he would prefer to play short, a lot more comfortable there, enjoys the game more at shortstop. Here's Jose Martinez. And the first pitch strike. Mid-90s fastball from Carnes. A lot of changes on this race club as we've discussed earlier and all winter as they uh, occurred. But the one consistent thing on this club I think that will uh, carry over from the last few years we're going to see players play a number of different positions. They love versatility. That was one of the concepts of creating depth. You do it through versatility, and the Rays will continue to do that. 2-2. Two -two. Logan Forsythe, you know, he's at second base today, but you're likely to see him just about any place, including some at first. It's one of the reasons they're taking a look at Jake Elmore. He's played all over the place. Liner up the middle. Off the fastball, and Martinez has his second hit of the spring. A two-out single. Here comes the first base runner of the game. And here's Chris Herman, young catcher having a good spring. He last year hit 213. And in 10 games this spring, he has been pushing the 370 mark. This 
just underway. Top of the second inning. Carnes had a 1-2-3 first. Nolasco had a 1-2-3 first. Martinez on first. And so Carnes for the initial time today out of the stretch. <laughs> Slapped up the middle. Both hits coming off the fastball. So with two outs, the Twins put two men on. He's a mated hitter is Eric Fryer. He's two for 12 this spring. Carnes the last time out on the 14th. Pitched four innings and a 3-2 to two win over the Orioles. Gave up no hits, didn't walk anybody, had a couple strikeouts. Fryer takes that pitch for a ball. Off speed. Carnes nine and nine last year for the Durham Bulls in 27 starts and made a couple starts for the Rays. Won a game and lost a game. Right center field. Sousa on the run. Dives and can't come up with it. Falls in for a hit. Two runs will score and Friars at second with a double. So with two outs. And nobody on base. The Twins have put three consecutive hits together and have taken a two to nothing lead. See Sousa playing Fryer to pull the ball and had a long run to make that did have some hang time. And Sousa, a good outfielder. He's good at all three positions. And I think, like most of those players who can play all three positions, like center field. And came up just short on that one. So a double for Fryer. It's 2 nothing. And Bernier, the second baseman, takes a pitch low. Come in seven and five on the spring. Carnes up in the count. Here's Paul Molitor. Little stop by Casale on the pitch, darting down and away. 2 2. him in the hand. Well, that ball ricocheted off his hand. And the Twins will want to take a look at their second baseman to make sure he's all right. It, you could hear that. It almost sounded as if it hit the bat and it might have hit part of the knob of that bat. Because it sounded as if it made contact with the wood of the bat. Let's listen to that for a moment. So 
So this top half of the second inning will continue. With Bernier at first and Fryer on second. Well, five men in a row retired before the trouble began. And Carnes, who had given up two runs against the Yankees up in Tampa on the ninth in three innings, has been touched for two runs here. Foul up the right side. There's Santana who opened the game in that leadoff spot. Carnes got ahead of him and struck him out swinging. Santana out of the Dominican Republic. Just 24 years old. Back to the hill. And the toss to first takes care of Santana and the Twins, but they score two and lead two to nothing to an inning and a half. This Bottom half of the second inning, the Twins scoring two in the top half of the second. Joined by the principal owner, Stuart Sternberg, is in town for the week watching the teams, too. A lot of new faces this year. Yeah, we seem to have a lot of faces every, new faces every year, but this is even more so than usual. And in particular, the guy running the show, the new manager, Kevin Cash. I thought you meant the new team president or the new head of baseball operations. Oh, yes, the guy running the show on the field, Kevin Cash. We're really excited to have Kevin in with us. One of those uh, guys that is very familiar is leading off this inning, though, Evan Longoria, so there's still some familiar faces around. And there's the music. Music to my ears, literally and figuratively, right? Ev Evan has obviously been uh, the face of the franchise, and we unfortunately uh, moved Ben Zobrist out this year, who's been a long-time Ray. He was a double Ray. And uh, we were sorry to see Ben go, but you know, like everything else, we have change. Try to reinvigorate things, reinvent things a little bit, and we feel pretty optimistic about the future. Yeah, I want to ask you about that. Uh, in particular, this season, a lot of times you go into a year with expectations and things don't work out. And this year, the expectations aren't quite where they've been in the past. Seems that we work better that way. And I, I remember before last year, there were uh, predictions of us getting, whoa, get down. That'll fall. All right, that'll fall. Uh, so far, uh, we'll get to it. I, I'll remember that one. That's easy. Um, Last year, yeah, the expectations yeah, many to win the World Series. Win the World Series, win the East, all that stuff. And, you know, we fell on our faces quite a bit. We go back to 2011 where everybody thought we didn't have a chance, 2008. And we sort of turned it on and uh, expectations a little different. We seem to play a little better from behind. Last year we got off to such an atrocious start and the team came on like gangbusters. But it was uh, certainly too little and it was a bit too late even. Evan with a leadoff single here in the bottom of the second. Juan Francisco will be the hitter. When you look at this team, and your goal is always to play meaningful games in September, uh, a few little hiccups here that you weren't expecting in spring training, especially with the rotation. But what are your thoughts about the possibility of this squad playing meaningful games in September? We have that expectation. If we... Uh, first pitch. Uh, <laughs> that's all right, as long as... Uh, you actually went much further than I would have thought. The wind's blowing out of it. Uh... You know, if, if we didn't have that expectation, we would not have gone out and, and made some of the free agent signings that we did. Clearly, it's not a uh, Max Scherzer type of deal or, or you know, a $100 million deal. But for us to go out and spend the money we did on a, on uh, Cabrera and, and on some relieving, you know, relief pitchers, 
Uh, it's significant. We, there was no payroll dumping or anything like that going on. So we came in well, well north of where we had expected to be. But we thought we had the makings of a really good team. And we're going to be challenged early on, especially with the, the way the starting pitching is doing so far. Yeah, no doubt the rotation on opening week in April is not going to resemble what the rotation could be in opening week of May. I wouldn't expect it to. I wouldn't expect it. Last year sort of happened the other way around. Where, you know, Matt Moore got hurt, you know, a little, a little after that. Fortunately, the first couple of times through, it's, we've got some off days. Uh, we'll probably have to juggle a little bit, but we won't need the full five-man cl- in a classic sense as we've seen in the past. Uh, however, we are going to need a couple of guys, particularly Smiley and uh, Alex Cobb, to come back healthy, and we expect them to be healthy and back uh, pitching in April. Everyone always wants to know as we get ready for the season in two and a half weeks, anything new on the stadium front? Uh, December, the St. Pete City Council with a negative vote. Uh, anything new since then? No, that look, that was a, that was a very big issue. Uh, Mayor Kreisman uh, came into office a little over a year ago. Had a We had an agreement to visit things at the end of the season. Unfortunately, the end of... Uh-oh, let's get through, get through. How did that get through? I don't know. Uh-oh. I thought the, I think the shortstop was expecting a second base and second baseman shortstop. I remember the, when we played the Red Sox a couple of years ago in the playoffs, the only mistake they had in that charm season was when the second baseman and shortstop ran into each other that year. So I'll always sort of, anyway, I don't know why it made me think of that. Uh, tough series. Uh, yeah, so we, we, we had worked with the mayor, came the end of the season, which came a little sooner than we would have liked. We would have liked that to be in November, but... Uh, hammered out an agreement that was difficult for both sides, made ourselves available to city council members, and then unfortunately came up with a, a, a vote, you know, against it. But uh, we still remained a bit optimistic that maybe, upon speaking to some of the uh, council members, that they might feel differently. Let's see what Susie could do here as well. One of the new faces. He's got some real thump in his bat. Okay. Tough to throw him a high pitch, too. Um, so, yeah, but uh, we, we've been offered, we've had meetings with the city council members. We are offered continue to make ourselves available to each and every one of them to see what it is they precisely would like to see happen. Um, but, you know, that as we're getting ready for the season, our focus now is on baseball. But, uh, you're very confident that baseball will remain in this area. That's my goal. I'm confident. I'm, I'm sort of the guy who can, you know, have it happen right now, but I do need some willing partners on the other side. Uh, the toughest part is going to be uh, figuring out where it is and how you pay for it. This is also now another roadblock in front of us, but uh, we've been trying to look for that pinpoint perfect spot now, and it's been a lot of years, but um, I'm going to continue at it in a dogged fashion. We saw Forsyth move up on a ball in the dirt. I've got to think this year in particular, with offense down across the board, and the Rays were last in the AL run score, those extra 90 feet, not only to stay out of a double play, become huge plays. Oh, yeah. Well, look, historically, uh, you know, for the number of years we had before, we were, we were a great base running team, very aggressive. And uh, some of that, I guess, to given the personnel or whatnot, disappeared a little bit. Um, you know, in particular, like Jason was always great, you yes. know, when the ball's in the dirt. Probably as good as it was. So it's, uh, you know, that, that I think some of that becomes infectious when you see it. So it felt like Jason, uh, Susan's got some great legs. We'll see how it works out. Uh, but yeah, we're going to have to be a bit more aggressive. I know that Kevin has been preaching. All right. He took a he took a took a tough pitch at 0-2 and ends up almost beating out a, a ground ball. For his his at bats, he uh, it's you want to see everybody hustle all the time, and he's hustling, but he eats up a lot of ground getting down there in a hurry. So that, that's nice to see. Um, forces the uh, defense a little bit, but um, I, I think we'll be a little bit more aggressive this year. Kevin has put a new bent on that. We'll have a, a different voice at first base with Rocco. Who historically has, you know, been a it was a great base runner, and they've been working even more diligently with the players on that this year. Well, Stu, I know everybody always appreciates the time that you give us, uh, especially during spring training when everyone's ready to go and fans are trying to kind of chopping at the bit right now. Well, I more than that, I appreciate the time. If people are watching the, the broadcast right now or listening on radio, I appreciate all the time you're giving us. As we prepare for another season. We're excited and we want to do the best we can for all our fans and for the whole region. All right, Stu, thank you very much. Well, in a season of change, it's great to have you back. It's great to have have uh, broadcasters back, our radio guys back, who we were here for our 10th year. Dwayne, obviously, for a long time. Brian is, you know, just incredible as well. So uh, something's changed, but it's great some things remain the same. And Dwayne has been there from the start. Let's take it back up to Dwayne. Stu, thanks. All right, thank you, Todd. Uh, a lot of insight right there in terms of the makeup of this club, where it is this year. Uh, 
some of those topics. Next inning, uh, we'll be chatting with Matt Silver, and it'll be interesting to discuss some of that with him as well. The Braves have come back answering the two by the Twins in the top half of the inning with a run here. 0-2 the count to Kurt Casale. And he lays off the pitch up. And fastball up around 93 from Ricky Nolasco. Longoria opened with a base hit. He has scored the run. Forsyth now at second. Souza picking up the run, batted in with the ground ball, the chopper. And Casale out on strikes. Oh, it's a tough breaking ball. Braves get a run. We're through two. It's two to one, Minnesota. Weeknights on Fox Business Network. A brand. Charlotte County. Team scoring in the second inning. Opening day for the Rays against the Orioles. Just around the corner, about two and a half weeks away. Join us Monday, April 6th. They'll take on Baltimore. Get your tickets to experience all the fun and excitement of opening day. Visit RaysBaseball.com or call 888-FAN-RAYS. It'll be a Monday afternoon game. A 3-10 start and then two night games against the Orioles. And then the Rays hit the road, so they're home for just those three to begin the 2015 season. Jordan Schaefer leads it off. The right fielder from Minnesota. Carnes throws him a fastball for a strike. Rosario next and then Vargas. Scythe is there to handle that ground ball. So the leadoff man retired. He's beating the Twins for the third time this spring. They beat the Twins 5-2 to two at Hammond Stadium on the 11th of this month. That followed a victory here on the 6th, 2-1 to one over the Twins. Ball on to Rosario. The Rays beginning the year, at least spring training, scratching for runs, but it has been a different story the last seven games or so. Rosario out in front, swinging over that pitch. One and one. Two balls and a strike. And that 
That one left up. Fastball out of the zone. Three and one. Twins last year won 70 games. They were 70 and 92. Pitching was an issue. Their rotation, which over the last couple of years has been an issue, remained that way. Ground ball, and that's going to be stopped by Forsythe, but no play. The other thing that the Twins wanted to address over last year on the offensive side is advancing runners and making their outs more productive. It's something that during their good years, the Twins were very good at moving runners, getting them into scoring position, using outs to a positive effect. And frankly, that's one thing the Rays had some issues with last year. They had put a number of men on base, couldn't get them home, left a lot of men on base. And they're hoping that with the addition of a couple of these positions, that there will be upgrades not only defensively, but offensively as well. Two strikes now on Vargas with the shift on and a man at first, one out. Here, Todd, with uh, Stu Sternberg, they're talking about last year's offense. I think last in the league in production. I think 27th overall in the major leagues, so they're looking to improve. Their offense. Start and stop by Rosario. Vargas takes the pitch down. And so with the idea of trying to get a little more offense, Evan Cash has Asdrubal Cabrera on this club, a two-time All-Star, and Steven Souza Jr. coming off that great year in the International League. Two and two. The other position, the Rays, because of age and injury, didn't get a lot of offense from catching last year. In fact, I think they got 26 runs scored out of catching. And the kind of year that uh, Rene Rivera put together over in San Diego gives you hope that there will be more offense out of the catching spot as well. Runner goes in, standing up, and he is out with Cabrera. Putting the tag on him, a strike him out, throw him out, double play. And that will retire the Twins in the top half of the third. Vargas striking out for the second time and the caught stealing. Accounting for the final out of the inning. Cabrera putting the tag on him. We welcome you back to Charlotte County, the Rays and the Minnesota Twins moving into the bottom of the third, and we are happy to have join us 
Matt Silverman, uh, new role, Matt, this year, and uh, we're going to get an opportunity for the next half inning, maybe an inning, if we can talk you into it, to stick around, talk about that. Sounds good. Uh, glad you guys are back on the air. It uh, feels like baseball season again. It does indeed. It's good to be here for sure. So we'll see uh, as this afternoon progresses uh, some of the new faces. We've talked about some of those, but want to get your perspective on it as well. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a good start to the spring. Obviously, the pitching is going to be a, a focus of ours as we try to get our guys healthy. But uh, otherwise, um, it's been a, a good good vibe in the camp, and guys seem to be taken to, uh, to the new order pretty well. Jake Elmore leading it off, and it took the first pitch for a strike. Elmore... De Jesus and Rivera. Well, everybody right now, and we have a lot to talk about, but right now, um, everybody's talking about the pitching, as you might well expect with uh, the injury situation. And, I mean, you know that you're, you're probably going to face some of that at some point. Maybe... I don't know if this is a good time or not, if there is such a thing as a good time for it. Well, the, yeah, there's no good time for it. And, you know, we know that injuries are a part of the game. You try to avoid the clustering of them, and we, we got a little bit of that. It's Martinez at third. Elmore is the first out here in the bottom of the third. So your approach now with Smiley, who you expect will be right there, with Cobb, you're going to lose your opening day pitcher at least for uh, a short time. And and Ka and the Kalame was late getting here, and then had pneumonia. So all of those things leave you trying to fill some spots. And so, what do you do to fill those spots? You know, fortunate that we have a number of uh, good young arms in camp, uh, guys that we know are going to be a big part of the of the future of this organization. And it feels like a couple of them are going to get their chances a little bit earlier than we might have expected. Uh, but that's why we have depth, uh, and we're going to do everything we can to, to mix and match as we wait for some of our starters to get healthy and put these guys in positions where they can succeed. The one thing that has been the case around this club for a long time, De Jesus sends it deep the opposite way, and that's off the glove of Arce out there, bounding into the bullpen. De Jesus will wind up at second base. Boy, that's some pop the other way by De Jesus. Yeah, a little bit of wind, but uh, nice to see that opposite field power, and uh, he starts to uh, starting to get on track, which is nice to see. You know, here's the question about him: a lot of a lot of discussion about whether he's going to be with the club or not. Uh, and, and I know that there's no no details that you could offer on that, but. Uh, what is the situation with him? You know, we have a very full outfield, uh, and, and, and we all know it, and we've talked about it behind closed doors with each other, and uh, everyone's getting ready for the season. And uh, it's been a very professional approach for uh, from everyone, knowing we got to get at bats, the guys got to get ready for the year, and things tend to, to work themselves out. And so uh, I really applaud all the guys in, uh, in situations like that for going out and, and doing what they need to do to get ready for the year. Here's another one of your acquisitions, Rivera, at the plate now. The DH had a chance to uh, chat with him yesterday. And in terms of approach, really impressed with the way he's come to camp and taking that the catching side of his game so seriously. Yeah, uh, and that's and that's what was advertised, uh, a guy who really values the relationship with the, the pitching staff, and he immediately got to know our guys. Uh, he was at the trough early, catching some bullpens, uh, talking, and he was even out golfing with some of the starters, you know, just, just uh, making everyone feel comfortable and uh, making sure that he was getting past that learning process as quickly as possible. Yeah, he might be a broadcaster golfing for professional reasons, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two and all the count here to Rene Rivera. I also like the uh, the potential offense that that you might pick up behind the plate with Rivera. Yeah, he uh, he had a really good offensive season last year, sort of a breakout year for him in San Diego. Uh, you know, for us, we're looking for more more offensive production out of the catching spot than we got last year. Uh, he doesn't need to be a big bopper. He doesn't need to be someone who's going to carry the team offensively, but be someone who's additive. And if we get the kind of season, anything close to the season he had offensively last year, it'll be a, it'll be fantastic, especially given the consistency that he has behind the plate. You know, you were president of this club for a long time. Now you move into president of baseball operations. Uh, you, you know the job's going to be different. Did you know it was going to be as fast-paced as, as this offseason turned out to be? Yeah, it was. It was high-altitude training from uh, from day one, you know, and some of that had to do with uh, just the roster crunch that we were facing. I think we, 
whoever was in the seat that, I, that I'm in was going to have to go through and figure out uh, the roster crunch with a lot of prospects who are, uh, needed to be put on the roster. So we, uh, we got to work early, and it's been a, a frenetic offseason, but, but one that uh, we're really satisfied with at the end of the, the offseason. You know, a lot's been made about all the changes here as we uh, watch Rivera here on a 2-2 pitch and De Jesus in scoring position. Santana at short will take care of that ground ball for the second out. A lot of changes. That became the topic of discussion. Was that something that was pre-planned coming off last year, or was that something that opportunities developed and one thing led to another? Yeah, much, much more about opportunities developing and, and, and uh, presenting themselves, and we, we took advantage of deals that we didn't know were going to be there. Um, and um, once we started accepting change i think it became a little bit easier for us to accept more change and recognize that um it was it was a big off season for us and that uh, we were going to start fresh in a way but at the same time you look the strength of this team the the pitching the defense is there we have a deep bullpen so there's a lot of consistencies that go along with that change it's cabrera taking a pitch down and in with that change I think there was a tendency on the part of maybe casual fans to think, well, they're rebuilding, they're lowering payroll. When you look at the numbers, that's not necessarily the case, is it? No, I think this will be the, the second highest payroll that we'll, that we'll have in our franchise's history starting the season. And, you know, we believe we can compete. We believe that, uh, that the East is open. Uh, it's part of the reason why we signed Carrera to uh, the deal that we did. Short hop to the second baseman, Bernier, who handles that. And Rays leave a man on base. Matt, great to have you with us. Uh, we appreciate you stopping by. Great to see you all Matt, year long. Matt Silverman with us. We are through three. It's two to one, Minnesota. Twins as we head to the fourth inning, talking now with first-year manager for the Tampa Bay Rays and local product Kevin Cash. Kevin, here we are, game 15, 16 to go after this one, so you're basically at the midway point of the spring. How's it gone so far? It's gone really well. You can, you can see the last couple days the bats have started to come to life. We've, we've had good, really good pitching throughout the uh, course of spring. Guys came in good shape, so it's been fun. I think we're starting to get, like you said, halfway point, and then after that we'll be ready to go. We've got a couple of guys not here today that are getting some at-bats at the minor league fields, right? Yeah, uh, KK, Kevin Kiermeyer, and Nick Franklin both are over there. Uh, I think they're both probably leading in A-B categories, so we wanted to get some other guys, some A-Bs on the you know, main game and get them over there, keep them in line and everything, and uh, they've done a nice job. We've seen Nick play shortstop and also Estrubal Cabrera getting a chance at short today. When would you like to have that decision made? You know, as soon as possible, but uh, well, we're not putting an exact time date, uh, timetable on it. We're, we're, we're just we're still monitoring the situation. We got to find out what's best for our team and all the players involved. They've been great about it, being very flexible and versatile, getting their working at different positions. But uh, you know, hopefully sooner than later. And then Nathan Carnes today, what have you seen? What do you like? He's thrown the ball well. He threw the ball really well his last start. He's thrown the ball well today other than he, he kind of had a perfect place double against him. Uh, but I like how he's down in the zone. He seems to have a good breaking ball going. But he, he's, he's done a really nice job this spring. All right, Kevin, thanks for the time. All right, Todd, thank you. All right, Dwayne, back to you. All right, Kevin and Todd, like the two of you, 
We're headed here in the top of the fourth with Arcia leading off. Two and one the count. Three balls and a strike. Jose Martinez next, and then the catcher, Chris Herman. Well, there are always going to be challenges, and the Rays are facing some in the early stages due to the health and the pitching situation. No more takes care of that one in right. And Arcia is aboard with a base hit. Five hits allowed by Carnes. And here is Jose Martinez. Martinez started that uh, two run uprising in the second with a base hit, a two out single. And he lined a fastball into center. One ball, no strikes. Two runs, five hits for the Twins, a run, three hits for the Rays. And toward left center out of the reach of Cabrera. Sousa with the pickup. Over to third goes Arcia. And now trouble with men on the corners at first and third and nobody out. Here's the line drive off the bat of Martinez. He came in one for 14, two for two so far today. So a threat again by the Twins. Trying to add to their lead. As we mentioned when Herman was up in the second, he's had a hot bat all spring. And he takes that pitch a little wide. On one count. Herman out of the University of Miami. He was born in Tomball, Texas, and went to community college at Alvin, Texas. Did almost 500 there and then wound up in Miami. Two and one. Takes the high fastball. It's three and one. Friars on deck. He has collected both runs batted in for Minnesota. This one blocked by Casali on ball four low. So that's going to load the bases. They're loaded with nobody out. And Casale is going to go spend some time with Carnes. Jim Hickey had a little conversation going down there with the bullpen. Raise up this season with Rays Flex Packs featuring a Rays pullover. There's six, three, six or nine game packs offering huge savings and great rewards throughout the season. Pricing starts at $59. Call 888-FAN-RAISE or visit RaysBaseball.com. McCards had three innings under his belt and has opened the fourth, loading the bases. And Hickey goes out there to spend a little time on the mound as the bullpen begins to stir. Curveball. 
Kirby Yates, who was on the uh, card to see some action today, is now throwing in the bullpen. Carnes now in the mid-50s in his pitch count here in the fourth inning with the bases loaded and nobody out. And here's Fryer. That's a breaking ball in there for a strike. Big threat by the Twins. One ball, one strike. You know, when you think about the potential arms in here who could give the Rays a necessary uh, handful of starts to begin the year with uh, Smiley being slow here in the spring because of the shoulder situation and now Cobb. You can look at Mike Montgomery, who uh, they had talked about pitching out of the bullpen after starting at Durham, but uh, they'd probably see him get stretched out just in case. Matt Andrees, the right-hander, a sinker ball right-hander who spent last year at Durham. Annie Romero, Nathan Carnes, of course, trying to grab one of those spots. Remember Tiford, who is in camp, this pitch popped up. It's Forsyth out there. Turns out to be an infield fly called. That's the first out in the fourth inning. And here's the breakout. Uh, Tiefer threw the other day against the Phillies. And it was impressive. Good command. And Birch Smith. And Smith is going to get a start. He'll start uh, tomorrow against the Blue Jays here. He was acquired from the uh, San Diego Padres, you may recall. So they're all going to get a very good look because it would appear the Rays are going to need at the minimum uh, first couple times through the rotation to slot somebody in there because of the injury situation. Ground ball off Bernier's bat. Short second to first. Double play. And Carnes is out of that jam. Cabrera starts the double play with Forsyth in the middle of it. Big threat. Twins do not score. 2-1 Minnesota. We're headed into the bottom of the fourth inning. Twins leading the Rays. We are ready for another exciting season of Rays baseball. Purchase your 2015 ticket plan today and get the best seat locations. Choose from a variety of plans and don't miss a minute of the fun with Rays baseball. For ticket plan information, visit RaysBaseball.com or you could always call 888-FAN-RAYS. Gorgeous day in Charlotte County for baseball today. Twins scored two in the second. The Rays got a run in the second, coming in to hit in the bottom of the fourth against Ricky Nolasco. And Evan Longoria is going to lead it off. The Rays cleanup man. On Francisco to follow, and then Logan Forsythe. The Rays had 15 hits yesterday at Dunedin. 
and beat the Blue Jays nine to three. Four home runs. Evan Longoria got his first of the spring. James Loney hit one. Kurt Casale hit one. And third base prospect Richie Schaefer also hit one. Longoria takes this pitch upstairs. Ball one. Foul back. One and one. Lasco, 32 years old. He had some elbow issues last year. That breaking ball. Good curveball there. He'll give you a lot of off speed stuff. Good fastball. He'll throw the split to change and then drop that good breaking pitch in there that time. On the ground for Martinez at third. Longoria out at first. Well, that's one thing Longoria does. When you talk about leadership, he, he's not a high profile guy in the clubhouse. He's not all that vocal. But you, you watch him in the spring and ground balls. He did the same thing up in the Clearwater when they played the Phillies. He will hustle down the line on a routine ground ball because you never know what could happen. And that's the way to play the game, and that's what he does. Here's Francisco. One ball, no strikes. You get a, a new group and some young players in that group as the Rays have. Things like that from a veteran player mean a lot towards setting the atmosphere. Francisco, a big cut. We've seen him do that before. Francisco, a very strong guy up there. It's Alex Meyer down in the bullpen for the Twins. He's scheduled to see action and is loosening now. One and two. Two balls, two strikes. Rays, during their first seven games, hit just 188 as a team and were averaging under two and a half runs a game. And in the last seven games, they're hitting 291, averaging just under six runs a game. And looking for the offense to be better. Their combination this year would be solid pitching supported by an improved defense and have that offense improve a few notches and if they can do that it could be a fun year Francisco high pop foul Herman a good effort to get there and now it's Martinez at third and it's just short Martinez just short of getting there I'll tell you, Herman covered a lot of ground from the catching spot. And Martinez came up just short. Watch the Twins catcher. That infielder's got a better angle on it if he can get there. But you got to get there first. Full count. Velasco has not walked anybody today, and this is the first three ball count he's had. It's 3 2 here to Francisco. High fly ball deep into left. 
Arcia to the track. Now the center fielder Rosario at the track and left center makes the catch. That shows you how strong, of course, as we uh, mentioned, there's a little breeze out there, and Francisco did not hit that ball all that well. But a combination of his strength, up by that wind a bit, that went all the way to the warning track. Two gone, and here's Logan Forsythe. Speaking of power, Forsythe had that two home run game against the Phillies in Clearwater on Tuesday. Two opposite field home runs, and that's something we did not see at all from Forsyth last year. Down and away, two and on the first of those two home runs. I mean, anytime you hit a home run, you've done something, but the first of those two home runs to right, he hit against the Phillies. He really drove that ball deep toward right field, a little bit toward right center, but still pretty much straight away right, and he got hold of that one. Up in the count, 3-0. and oh. Three one fastball. Full count now. We'll do that one again. Rage with a home game here after a couple of road games against the Phillies and the Blue Jays, a stretch of three straight. Home games now on the card. And there's ball four. So the first walk issued by Nalasco. Steven Sousa Jr. up here. Sousa. Drove in a run with a ground ball, a chopper to third his first time. There's a strike. The reports we get on Sousa is over the last couple of years, he's made big strides. His approach to the game matured. He'll tell you his approach to life overall matured. And his approach to hitting more of a hitter than a strong swinger. That's uh, exemplified by the batting practice routine he has. He'll hit the ball all over the place. Starting in right field and use all the field. And a guy with uh, the kind of strength that he has, I think he'll tell you that he's learned that if, if he can become a solid hitter, that that power takes care of itself as strong as he is. And he will get that opportunity here. Stairs, it's two and one. <laughs> Run 
Runner goes the ball away on the pitch. Forsyth will make the turn but decide to hang on. He now finds himself in scoring position with two outs and a 3 1 count. That ball got away, but he was breaking Forsyth. And he'll get a stolen base as a result of the break. And that ball getting away from Herman, but the fact that Forsyth was breaking prevents that from being a pass ball and goes into the books as a stolen base. Long shot deep to left. Arsa looking up, gone. Home run for Sosa, and that will give the Rays the lead. Well, there's that power. He got up 3 1 and drives it out of here. And the Rays will take a 3 to 2 lead. Alasco challenged him 3 1. And Steven Sousa Jr. hits this one out. Line drive back into the vicinity of the bullpen. And that's going to be it for Nolasco. Sousa now with all three runs batted in. The Twins make a pitching change. We'll take time for this. The first lead of the afternoon, 3-2 on a Steven Souza Jr. two-run home run. Ryan Presley on for the Minnesota Twins. We're joined by Evan Longoria, who played his third of four consecutive games. Important for you to get a lot of games in a row here? Well, I'm just trying to pile up the at-bats. Uh, I felt pretty good the last couple, so I'm just trying to carry it into um, a couple more at-bats and start to get into a little bit more of a rhythm. When you see the ball well like you did in the, uh, apparently last game and hit a home run, is that that's basically what you're looking for right now? Yeah, just um, really trying to settle into the spring and into um, feeling good at the plate. And uh, really the results don't matter. It's just um, uh, just feeling good in the box and seeing, seeing more pitching. We know that offense is, is going to be an issue this year, and hopefully guys like Steven Souza are going to contribute one of the new faces. So you, you saw him hit a two-run home run. Your thoughts on what you've seen out of him this spring? He's been really impressive. I uh, I love the way he works. I love his attitude. Um, I think he's going to bring a ton uh, to us on and off the field, just in terms of the way that uh, guys go about their business. And it's just really good to see... Um, He's not necessarily a rookie, but, you know, younger guys come in and, and work like he does and kind of just um, keep his head down and really um, go after it the right way. Yeah, it seems like these guys are really – we saw Logan a pitch in the dirt, take that extra base. seems like these guys are really – they're they're really uh, making those 90 feet on the bases important to try and get those extra runs. I mean, we're going to have to. It's uh, it's no secret that, that we're not going to go out and have, you know, three or four guys that hit 30 home runs. We're going to have to uh, – figure out ways to score runs and uh, and doing that you know, running the bases the right way and getting the occasional two run home run is, is the way we're going to do it. Thanks for the time Longo. All right. Thanks. All right. Back to you Dwayne. All right Todd. Thank you. Ryan Presley is the new pitcher. And Casale checks on that one. It's two and one to count to Kurt Casale here. So Nolasco out of the game after three and two thirds and the Rays get three runs off him and now Presley is on. We'll take the count to 2 2. Presley, 26 years old. 6 3, 6 4. 
is the build of a classic pitcher. Split last year between Rochester and Minnesota, 2 and 0. In his time with the Twins last year, and he strikes out Casale. So the Rays are finished in the fourth inning, but on one swing of Steven Souza Jr.'s bat, they have taken the lead. His second home run of the spring, 3 2 Rays. We have a 3-2 Rays lead as we head to the fifth inning, and one of the reasons why the Rays are in the lead and taking that lead in the bottom of the four, Steven Souza Jr. with that two-run home run. We talked to you before the game. You said you're looking for pitches, and you found one to drive there that last day, huh? Yeah, yeah, no, you are uh, you come to spring, and you're trying to see as many pitches as you can, but uh, it's good to get one on the barrel and see it go that far. It's good to have Chris Archer trying to distract you a little bit behind you, too. Yeah, it's uh, it's good to keep it loose in here and, and get some seeds thrown at you. I saw you tried to keep it loose. You kind of photobombed uh, Longo there. When you watch Evan, um, what, what do you take away from watching a guy like that and how he plays the game? Uh, he's just a professional. You know, he handles himself the right way. He carries himself uh, on the field the right way, and he's he's more of a leader by the way he does it. And so uh, it's, it's a good example to watch, and I'm going to keep watching him. When you get a pitch to hit and you, and you make contact like that, it, it has to feel like, all right, I've been, you said you'd like to see a few hits fall in, but that has to feel good to see the work pay off. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, you're just looking for some barrel and, um, you know, that you're seeing the pitches right. And, yeah, when that, when that happens like that, uh, it's a good feeling for sure. So this team seems like it's uh, it's pretty straightforward and, and serious, right? There's no, no looseness on the behind you. I would like to describe us as a military aspect, no messing around, no nonsense type group. I <laughs> appreciate it, Steve. Thanks. All right, way back to you. Yeah, that looks like it, doesn't it? You've got Chris Archer down there armed with uh, sunflower seeds. No messing around. Well, the Rays take a 3-2 to two lead. We go to the fifth. Well, four pitches in to Danny Santana with a count. Two strikes. Rays have made some defensive changes. Carnes still out there on the mound opening the fifth inning here. And he had through four innings given up the two runs on six hits. Pitch upstairs. Mikey Matuk is in center field now for the Rays. New left fielder as well. Butler has taken over out there. Joey Butler. And there's a cut to miss. Santana out on strikes for the second time. And so that gets Carnes up into the um, mid 60s in pitch count. I think we're going to see a change here. There's that breaking pitch to get Santana. And that is going to be it for Carnes. So with 67 pitches in, Carnes will head to the Rays dugout with a 3 2 lead.
is coming off an outstanding outing the last time he was on the mound against the Orioles. Four innings, goes four and a third. 67 pitches. Got Santana on strikes a couple times. He got uh, out of a big spot in the fourth inning. Got a pop-up of Fryer in the double play ball from the second baseman, Grenier. After the base had, had been loaded with nobody out. And then the strikeout of Santana again. So 67 pitches of work for Nathan Barnes. Four to third. A couple of runs. Six hits. He had four strikeouts. Gave up one walk. And the new pitcher will be Kirby Yates. With one out and the base is empty in the fifth inning. And overall... Uh, one would think uh, that Carnes would be happy with his day's work, and so would Kevin Cash. Now here's Yates. 37 games last year for the Rays with a 375 earned run average. He faces Jordan Schaefer. There's a strike. We mentioned the two defensive changes in the outfield for the Rays. Also changes on the corners on the infield. Juan Francisco, who started at first, replaced there by Vince Belnomi. And Francisco has moved over to third, replacing Evan Longoria. One and one to count on Schaefer. Two balls and a strike. We'll take the count to two and two. Rosario is on deck. <laughs> and the count is full. He's coming up through the Rays organization. Before he came to the Rays last year at Durham, he was in a little over 20 games out of the bullpen for the Durham Bulls with a 0.36 earned run average down there. Shot into center. Montuk back to the track, and he makes a nice running catch. That's a nice job by the young center fielder out there. He's another guy. You might want to keep your eye on. If you look at his numbers in Durham, he's one guy in the race system who has shown a good on-base percentage and a little pop, and he can do this. He can play the outfield. So you might be seeing a little more of him in the not-too-distant future. Here's Eddie Rosario. Strike one. One ball, one strike. Yates in here following Carnes. Rays had also listed Kevin Jepson, the big right-hander with the big arm coming over from the Angels. Is slated to see some work today. Brad Boxberger, who was
just spectacular for the Rays out of the bullpen last year. And Jordan Oberto, a lefty in camp, trying to impress and show that he's healthy. Popper left side, will it stay playable? It is right up against the stands and grabbed there by Francisco to retire the side. Turns out to be a one, two, three, fifth through four and a half. Three, two, Tampa Bay. Bottom half of the fifth inning, the Rays own a 3-2 to two lead. A guy who pitched into the fifth today, Nate Carnes, joins us right now. Nate, uh, you pitched a lot more out of the stretch this game. You didn't have to pitch out of the stretch last game. How do you assess your outing today? Uh, you know, I didn't have my best stuff today, but I was happy I was able to work through it. And, uh, defense made a big play, double play, get me out of the inning. So, you know, just work in progress right now. The first couple of runs could have been a zero spot. You know, that ball was up in the air a little while. But then you had that bases loaded, no out situation. Eh? You're, you want to see the results there. It's a tough situation to get out of. I'm happy to get work, be able to work through that. Yeah, um, you know, I, I got to let my defense make plays for me, and I, you know, I wasn't really doing a good job of throwing strikes at the time, so, you know, forced the hitters to get up there and uh, put the ball in play and see what happens. Any impact with the weather, gripping the breaking ball, or how was it out there? Uh, it's hot out here, so, I mean, anytime you get this type of weather, it's going to be hard to stay dry, so, you know, just hang with it and keep going. What would you like today in particular? Anything with the fat, spotting the fastball low in the zone? Was that a key? Oh, I mean, yeah, that's a key definitely to keep going out there and uh, get the ball down because, uh, you know, as you can tell, if you leave it up here, like Susie just showed you, you guys, he can hit it out. So there's uh, a lot of good hitters, so I'm just trying to keep the ball in the stadium right now. The opportunity is there for you and others to be in this starting rotation to start the season. Do you try and keep that out of your mind as you go out there every day? Uh, it's not even in there. I'm just coming here, put my work in, put my best foot forward right now. Nice job the last few starts and all spring long. Thanks, David. Thank you very much, Todd. All right, Dwayne, back to you. All right, thank you very much, fellas. Jake Elmore leading off here in the bottom of the fifth. It's two to nothing. Or two and oh the count. It's a three to two ball game. Rays up by a run and a strike there to Elmore to take the count to two and one. It into left by Elmore. So that is out number one here. Marcy is taking care of that one in left. Corey Brown. Brown hitting in the leadoff spot now, replacing David DeJesus. And that's a strike. DeJesus had a double in two at bats. And a two strike count. Last go for three and two thirds. Presley got the final out in the fourth and working here in the fifth inning. Corey Brown out of Plant High School. The pitch is upstairs, one and two. He's spent a little time in the big leagues with Washington and Boston. The 
hard stuff up. Strikes him out. Fastball up there. Two gone. This will be empty. For Rene Rivera, who bat again. He is looking for his first hit. 0 for 2 on the day. Up the right side and it is a fair ball into the corner. Rivera is on his way to second, and by the time it's dug out, he's standing with a double. So two base hit. Takes it the other way, picks up his second double of the year. A two out scoring opportunity for the Rays. Yeah, here's Cabrera. A strike. Rays grab the lead on the Steven Sousa Jr. home run in the bottom of the fourth. Take the count to one and one. Stairs. Two balls and a strike. Alex Meyer. Starts to loosen for Minnesota in their bullpen. Three balls and a strike. off his foot. So it's a foul ball and we'll have a full count with two outs and the base runner Rivera on second. Well, Cabrera playing shortstop today. We talked about that situation earlier in the game as to whether He'll wind up playing second base or shortstop. He would prefer short. And you could you could see the Rays uh, who say they're going to continue to take a look at that situation for a while. But what they're interested in, I think, as much as anything, is consistency at shortstop. In fact, Kevin Cash has said we want the routine play made every time. And there's been some talk that that perhaps. Cabrera had lost a little range. He played second when he went to Washington, but Washington had Ian Desmond playing shortstop. Pretty good shortstop. So um, you'd have to think that the odds are at least even and maybe a little better right now that Cabrera might be the shortstop here, which would suit him just fine. Three two pitch about to be made again. Chop foul. And there's a lot to be said about making 
the routine play. Remember a couple years ago when Ben Zobers wound up finishing the year playing shortstop, and there was always talk about does he have the range to play short? Well, maybe or maybe not, but he made all the routine plays. You get a double play ball, you're supposed to start a double play. That's a base hit into right field. Rivera will be held at third. So Cabrera, nice at bat there. 3 2, a couple of foul balls, and then the base hit into right. And it's first and third. Number three, So the Rays have a threat here. Cabrera. One for three on the day. Now Vince Belnomi will bat since taking over in the top half of this inning at first with Francisco switching over at third, replacing Longoria. Chop to second. Glove there and that will retire the side. Braves leave two. On to the sixth. Three two. Tampa Bay. We go to the sixth inning, and the Rays hold a 3-2 to two lead, taking on the Minnesota Twins. Just two and a half weeks away, opening day. We'll be there with our special coverage beginning at 1.30, our opening day coverage. With the Rays playing host to the Baltimore Orioles, we'll have the whole crew. Joined by Brian Anderson and Todd Callis. Doug Lecter will be there, Restless Destrada. Rich Hollenberg, Emily Austin will be there. Had an opportunity to spend some time with her, and we welcome her to the crew. So a lot going on opening day. Sorry, on to the sixth we go. Here's Vargas to lead it off. Pitch is upstairs to him. Want to know? Tim Beckham has entered the game. He's a shortstop now. Beckham taking over for Cabrera. Cut the miss. One and one. Boy, Vargas reminds you of Ortiz, David Ortiz, when he was younger. There's Tim Beckham. Ray's taking a very good look at him. He's in the infield mix. One and two. Come on. 
H came on, got the last two outs in the fifth inning, opening the sixth. And a big cut and a foul tip strikeout. Vargas out on strikes for the third time. Number 31, left fielder Oswaldo Garcia. Oh, Oswaldo Garcia. Garcia is one for two. Had a base hit in the fourth. In fact, that was the leadoff single in the fourth that eventually led to a bases loaded, nobody out situation for Nathan Carnes. And he got out of that with a pop up and a double play ball. High fly ball deep down the right side toward the corner. And foul. One and one. <laughs> Two balls and a strike. He had thought about it, but he checked in time. Takes the count to three and one. Good cut right there, that three one pitch. A little elevation on it up, and Arcia like the general location. Yates with an inning under his belt that equals his longest outing of the year so he's trying to extend that a little bit here. Darcy is thrown out Forsyth to Belnomi. Tonight on Fox Sports Live they've got all the news from around the world of sports including highlights of a full day in the MLB, NBA and NHL. Fox Sports Live tonight on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Now Jose Martinez. There's a strike. Twins have six hits. Martinez has two of them. It into left. Corey Brown is there to make the catch. One, two, three, go the Twins. Bottom of the sixth coming. Three, two, Rays.
Charlotte Sports Park in Charlotte County, Florida, where the Rays have a 3-2 to two lead over the Twins. We move into the bottom of the sixth. And the Rays, who scored two on the home run by Sousa Jr. in the fourth, will have Juan Francisco to lead off the bottom of the sixth. You can experience Charlotte Sports Park. By the way, rated the number one spring training ballpark by the readers of the USA Today. Games continue all throughout March with matchups against the Yankees, Red Sox, and, of course, others. By now at RaysBaseball.com slash spring. Tiki bar out there. A little shade, a little refreshment. We go to the bottom of the sixth, and let's check in with Todd. Thanks, Dwayne. Uh, with Jim Hickey, pitching coach. Uh, first of all, Nathan Carnes. You wanted to see him get stretched out a little bit more today. Your thoughts on his day? Well, he did get stretched out a little bit more. Got to, I think, 67 pitches. Um, started out really nice, really clean. Ran into a little bit of trouble later, falling behind in the count. Um, and he got hit a little bit, you know, but it was, it was all fastball damage. And I did ask him to go a little bit more fastball heavy today than he would normally. So at least he followed those instructions. But a, a good outing overall. Looked like you guys had a nice talk afterwards. Was that anything about mechanics? And how's he looked all spring? Well, he's actually looked pretty good all spring. Eh, a little bit mechanical, but not a whole bunch. Just more philosophical and about, uh, you know, the most efficient way for him to, you know, kind of get ahead and record outs, which, of course, is the name of the game. But uh, a little a little bit of both, but not too heavy on the mechanics. Yeah, after four perfect innings, he had a lot of chances to work out of the stretch today and worked out of a bases loaded, no out situation, which extended his pitch count. And then you go to Kirby Yates. Here's a little pop up to shallow center field. It's going to fall in for a base hit. Juan Francisco leads off with a hit. Kirby got extended a couple of extra outs. Is that something that's uh, nice to see out of a bullpen guy at this time of the spring? Something that's nice to see and something all the kind of uh, tradition, not traditional, but the the one inning relief pitchers, the guys that you would look at and know that regard. Uh, time for all those guys after about four or five outings to record more than three outs or at least uh, get up and down, you know, one time, whether it's three outs, four outs or five outs. But that is nice to see out of him. Obviously, there's some changes in the rotation in terms of what your plans were coming in and where they may end up at the end of spring. Normally, you would like to have your A, B, C, D, E guys start to line up for the regular season at this point. Is it kind of difficult right now formulating that schedule because everything's been changing on a, on a daily basis? Well, let's just say I've used my eraser quite a bit and everything <laughs> is still in pencil right now, but it's always in pencil because these are the things that happen. You know, we've just been very fortunate where it hasn't happened, you know, all that often to us and, and things just seem to, you know, happen in bunches, you know, just this, this spring. So, yeah, it's a little bit unsettled right now, but uh, we'll make the changes to the schedule and we'll have people out there, you know, ready to ready to pitch game one through 162. How many guys would you think are, are realistically in the mix for four and five in the rotation, or even three for that? Sure, I was going to say, who's three? Tell me who three <laughs> is. Um, uh, you know, there's probably five or six guys, and, you know, there may be a guy who's not even here right now that ends up coming into the picture, too. You know, these are things you have to consider. But, um, you know, it's going to be a challenge. Absolutely, it's going to be a challenge. But I really, really feel like we have the guys, you know, right here in this building right now that can get us through it until, you know, the, the people that we would consider the, the regulars come back and, you know, do the things that they're capable of doing. I, re I really feel that way. Do you want to get, when you figure out at least one, two, and maybe three, you want to get those guys on those every fifth day? times now with their next start? Oh, I absolutely want to, but that's probably not going to happen just because you know, one somewhere you're going to have to either come up short or you're going to have to come up a little bit long on, on one of those. So we're going to have to solidify who is going to be one, two, and three and then kind of work around that. Um, but it's not going to be major adjustments, but it's just a, an inconvenience, really. You mentioned five or six guys. Mike Montgomery has been a starter in his minor league career. You used him out of the bullpen early. Is he in the mix to move back, or is it too late to try and stretch someone like him out? It's not too late because he's already thrown up to about 50 pitches. I mean, he could make three or four more appearances and build his pitch count up to uh, almost 100 in that regard. So uh, that's something that's probably part of the discussion, as are uh, five or six other guys as well. And I think you're going to see some unconventional things once the season starts, I think, but that's just because uh, that's what's going to you know have to happen. <laughs> unconventional, too, in that your pitchers hit the second series of the year. Yeah, that's a little bit unconventional. But that's also an opportunity to be pinch hit for as well, you know, and to maybe remove a guy from a game a little bit no more, a little earlier than you would normally, you know, where that may come into play also. I can't see the bullpen from here, but who's next in the game? Uh, Kevin, Kevin Jepson's next, and then Boxberger, and then uh, Norberto, Jordan Norberto. Appreciate the time as always, Hick. All right, I'll see you in a little bit. All right, back to you, Dwayne. All right, Todd, thank you. Pretty good update right there from 
Jim Hickey. Meanwhile, the Rays have a little something going against the hard throwing Alex Meyer. Base hit by Francisco and Forsyth drawing a walk. Logan on for the third time. And Mikey Matuk up here. He made that nice running catch on a fly ball in center field in the top of the fifth. Bats here in the bottom of the sixth inning and takes ball two, two and one. Matuk out of Louisiana State University. He was in Baton Rouge, was born in Lafayette, Louisiana. And it's down three and one. Well, it took it just over 290 last year with the Durham Bulls, 292. And his on base percentage a little over 360. And he draws the walk here to load the bases. So the bases are loaded, you know. You're a young man in camp, and uh, you get a chance to get him at bat. And you draw a walk. You think, well, all he did is walk. But that's an impressive thing. He, he has impressed some people here with his play in the outfield and with his approach at the plate. And now he draws a walk to load the bases. And Kurt Casale is due up. And Meyer gets a visit. So the Rays with a major opportunity now. We'll look at Neil Allen, who is the pitching coach for the... Minnesota Twins most recently in the Rays organization with Durham he been at a couple spots with the Rays as a pitching coach in the minor league system and now the former big leaguer getting his first big league pitching coach opportunity Casale lifts it into right center field the right fielder Ortiz makes the catch a tag at third Francisco will score without a play, and the Rays get their fourth run. Casale drives in a run, and it's four to two. Sacrifice fly out there in right field. New outfield alignment finds Ortiz in right with Eric Ferris in center, Tyler Grimes in left for Minnesota. And here's Jake Elmore. That's a strike. Well, Meyer, who is consistently in the mid 90s and sometimes above, out of the Washington organization. That's where the Rays got. Nathan Carnes from Washington and saw a couple of hard throwing right handers formerly in the Nationals chain pitching in this game today. An 0 2 count to Elmore. Ball two strikes. Gee, that appeared to be a very hard slider right there. And he laid off. Raise with a run. Francisco opened with a base hit. Two walks later, he was at third and scored on the Casale fly ball to right. <laughs> two and two.
And time called. Take it all the way out to three and two. So Elmore, who was behind on the count, runs it all the way out. Opportunity with Corey Brown coming up. Brown 0 for 1. That's a strike. Three runs off Nalasco. One off Meyer with a chance for more. <laughs> it's one and one. Around 29 years old, as we mentioned the last time up. He's out of Plant High School in Tampa. One ball and two strikes. And is a non-roster player. Played his college ball at Oklahoma State. Twice named an All-American player at OSU. Up and away, and that one almost took off on Josmio Pinto, who's now doing the catching. This jab of a reception. <laughs> I don't like it. So 2-2. Two, two. Meyer trying to corral his stuff here. And he misses low. So a full count. Is another 3 2 pitch. One out in the inning with a run home. The Rays have a two run lead. Alan Dykstra has moved into the on deck spot. And a cut to miss at the fastball. That one. Hitting the mid 90s. Two gone. Here's a look at that high heat. Some movement away. And now Dykstra will pinch hit for the DH Renee Rivera, who had doubled in three official at bats. Misses the fastball, strike one. 
Dykstra out of Wake Forest. Getting some more action in the Twins bullpen. Michael Tonkin out there. That's fouled out of play. 0 2. Dykstra out of San Diego. Not related to Lenny Dykstra. Of Phillies and Mets fame. Allen in the minor leagues has shown some pop. He's consistently in double figures in home runs. Takes a big cut and is out on strikes here. So three walks, a couple strikeouts, and a run. 4 2 Rays lead. In the sixth inning and lead it 4 2 as we head to the seventh. That run scored courtesy of Kurt Casale with a sack fly. Kurt, you have a bases loaded situation, a pitcher who has struggled a little bit with command. Try and zone in on something on the plate there for early in the count. I think it's easy to get complacent in that situation and, and try and work a count to a guy who's not throwing strikes, but I just figured, you know, I might as well go up there hacking. He might he might leave me leaving one over the middle after a mound visit. And uh, fortunately he did, and I got it out there just deep enough for one again. And that's where we are right now. Two runs scored on a ball. It could be a, a, a shutout right now. That ball could have been caught. It was up in the air for a little while. But Nathan Carnes told us he didn't think he had his best stuff, but to work through a four and change and only give up that that two run spot, pretty nice. I, th I think Nate did really, really well today. You know, he, he was he was struggling and, and you know fighting a little bit out there, just trying to find his delivery and his timing of everything. But at the same time, he, he made some really good pitches. Uh, that that bases low situation. You know, first pitch change up right on right not many people can do that and uh that, that was big and i'm happy he got out of it the way that uh i thought he deserved to get out of it when you have that situation and you have right on right first pitch change does he shake to it or is that your idea no no i i think i've caught him enough in in the past uh, he, he's got faith in me and we, we threw a change up to the previous batter and uh had success on it to fryer he popped him up and uh you know texas leaguer out there so he's like yeah let's go for it I, I, you know give him one of those pound and say throw it throw it like you like you know you can and uh fortunately it worked out for us yeah it really worked out nice to pop up and double play and then kirby yates comes on and, and uh, we talked to jim hickey getting extended time for a reliever kind of nice to see him get five outs I, I i love kirby i think he's a great pitcher and he, he deserves good things to come his way and uh, he, he just keeps adding to his repertoire i mean last year he was mainly a fastball slider guy now he's dipping in a curveball he's got a really good change up to lefties and, and probably can mix it into righties eventually too but i'm, I'm really happy with with what he's doing and how he's evolving as a pitcher. You know the story of the spring. A lot of the Rays fans are concerned based on some guys expected to be in the rotation that have had some injuries. But you see a lot of these arms and you've seen them through the years. There, there's a lot of talent here vying for those last few spots. There's a lot of talent. I, I think, you know, one name sticks out is Matt Andres. And, uh, you know, it's unfortunate that we, we're, we're having guys go down at this time so close to the season. But it, it, at the same time, it gives people an opportunity to get to the big leagues and, and contribute early on. And, and Matt has shown that already through, through I think, three or four 
first starts already. But, uh, you know, don't sleep on him. He's he, he's going to help us, believe it. Tell us about his stuff, his pitch really moves, though. Matt's, Matt's interesting. He uh, He's a big sinker ball guy, uh, so he loves throwing into righties, uh, outside to lefties, and he's got this weird changeup. It's, it's almost like a cut changeup, and uh, it's probably one of the hardest pitches I, I have to catch on a daily basis. So uh, I'm, I'm definitely on my toes when he throws that one. And, He'll mix in a curveball and a cutter every once in a while, but I'd say those two pitches are probably his main, main game. Appreciate the scouting report. Nice job today, Kurt. Thanks. Um, yeah, thank you. All right, back to you, Dwayne. All right, thank you. It is interesting to hear uh, the Rays do have some options and uh, a collection of young pitchers who it would appear they're going to need to drop into a spot or two in this rotation for a little while. And so it'll be interesting to watch them here. Uh, the rest of spring training. You see Kevin Jepson in the game and what he did with the Angels last year. This guy has a big arm. 74 appearances for the Angels last year. They got Pinto looking on that off speed pitch there. And now Fryer trying to check on the fastball and he fouls it, strike one. Fryer had the double that dropped in, driving in two runs back in the second. Into center field, and that ball is caught by Matuk out there. Ball hit directly at him. One of those plays that's so difficult to judge whether you should come in or go back, how far it's going to carry, and there appeared to be perhaps a little sun involved in trying to determine the flight of that one as well. You can watch him go back and then come in and make the grab. Two outs. Base is empty. Bernier who started the day at second base moved over to play short. Been hit by a pitch and is grounded into a double play. <laughs> one ball, one strike. Two balls and a strike. <laughs> that will be a fair ball, foul ball, just outside the line. Bernier. Making a bid for a possible extra base hit there, and it was just foul. Base is empty, two gone. Count is full. Top of the order due next, and James Beresford took over at second base in the fifth inning. He is on deck. See another 3 2 pitch from Jepson. Jepson signed with the Angels, started his pro career back in 2002, got to the Angels for a handful of games in 08, and spent his entire career with the Angels. And he throws this one right by Bernier. Good fastball at 94. 
One, two, three. Go the Twins in the seventh inning. Mid-seventh, the Rays four and the Twins two. in Charlotte County. Seventh inning stretch following next Thursday's Rays-Yankees game. Catch the debut airing of the Tampa Bay Rays preseason special as the regular season and 2013 home opener draw closer and closer. Get ready for all 162 games with this episode full of in-depth analysis and unpreceded Rays clubhouse access. It's all during the Tampa Bay Rays preseason special debuting next Thursday at 4 p.m. Home half of the seventh inning back to the mound goes hard throwing right hander Alex Meyer. And you got a pretty good idea about him in the sixth inning. A lot of hard stuff, command, control an issue but when he can throw strikes and put it close to where he wants to he's tough Tim Beckham leads off and the first pitch is a strike Ray's got a run in the sixth inning on one hit three walks sacrifice fly in the mix couple of strikeouts as well and then he drops one of those on you after throwing fastball after fastball a little bend into that one and it's a call strike 02. And right back again and this time out on strike swinging. Well that's how tough he can be because you have to be so conscious of the hard stuff and any kind of breaking stuff at all that he can command. He would be devastating with that. Here's Belnomi. It's a little close. One ball, no strikes. There's Boxberger up in the bullpen. One hopper to second, handled by Beresford. Two up, two down. Juan Francisco opened the sixth inning with a base hit and scored a run. Bounce with the bases empty and two outs this time around. It's outside. Meyer was a first round pick by the Nationals in 2011. Attended the University of Kentucky. Two and all the count. After getting the first two men on just five pitches, he's three and out of Francisco. Yeah. Look 
look out. Which got around his feet from all four. So a two out walk. And Alexi Casilla, who had taken over at second base in the top half of this inning for Forsyth, will bat. Francisco's lifted. Taylor Motter is in there running for him. And there he goes. And he is thrown out at second base on the first pitch to Casilla. And that will retire the side. Grenier, the shortstop, taking the throw on the caught stealing. We welcome you back to Charlotte County, where the Rays have a 4-2 lead over the Minnesota Twins. And their fourth pitcher of the day takes over on the mound, Brad Boxberger, who was so impressive last year for the Rays. After getting a chance to stick with the Major League Club, he was dominant out of the bullpen. Just look at the strikeout numbers for him last year in 64 and two thirds innings. 104 strikeouts and only 20 bases on balls. And he's on to face the top of the order in the eighth inning. Opponents hit just 155 off Boxberger. And James Beresford leads it off. One ball, no strikes. First at bat for Beresford in this game. It's one and one. Two strikes. And that is strike three. Dug out of the dirt by Mayo Acosta. And that's out number one. Number 
So one away here in the eighth. The bottom fell out of that pitch to Bearsford, and one of the things that makes Boxberger so difficult. He drops this one in. You know, he's been working on a curveball a little bit, and uh, that had a little of that action to it. Uh, first pitch strike to Schaefer. When line foul, he has been working on the curveball, and he did show us the grip on that pitch. And that's a that's an interesting grip. You know, there for a while, uh, the knuckle curve was popular. There's a chopper back to the mound. And Boxberger with his kind of stuff, of course, he's not going to just throw a conventional curveball with a conventional grip. It would have to be Number something a little different. Three, center fielder Eric Ferris. So two outs here in the eighth. Eric Ferris up here. To the right side. To see it takes care of that. So Ferris is retired. One, two, three. We go to the bottom of the eight. Four, two, Ray. Heading into the bottom half of the eighth inning. Always entertaining here at Charlotte Sports Park. Now, these fans out in the outfield have one of the best views anywhere. Hey, I'm good. We're actually doing something on camera. We're talking about how great it is watching the game from the, the Tiki Bar. But no, I will get I will get to you in a second. But yeah, so out here. New York area. Out here, the, it's good breeze. Look, perfectly cold beverages right here. And uh, good food back here. So, guys. Right over here, you've got a, a, a place to get a steak and cheese sandwich, too. So you've got good food, tiki bar, sunshine, more of a breeze out here than anywhere close to the dugout. So it's very comfortable out here. And this spring, Dwayne, I, I'm sure you can attest, it's been about as nice a spring ever that I can remember from the first day of March all the way through. So uh, everybody enjoying a little sunshine and the Budweiser tiki bar. Back to you. Yeah, and Todd, I knew it was only a matter of time until you vacated the dugout and wound up out by the tiki bar it's got to be i mean it's part of the the ambiance here you got to at least make one full circle around the stadium it's one of the better spots to watch the game yeah we've all been together long enough to know each other's tendencies <laughs> that's yours right there i'm with you i it's, like I enjoy love it. all right buddy See ya. well we go to the bottom of the eighth inning and the rays hold a four to two lead tim stopper is the uh, new pitcher coming over from the National League and the San Diego Padres. Alexi Casilla will be the first man to face him, the fourth pitcher for the Twins in this game. Pitch is bounced foul, strike one. The last go, three and two-thirds. Ray's got three off him. Presley, an inning and a third, no runs. And Alex Meyer... One run in two innings of work. One and one to count to Alexi Casilla. Down to first. It's handled by Dan Rolfing. 
Matuk, who walked his first time. First pitch strike. Bottom half of the eighth. has come in throwing strikes. One ball, two strikes. Oh, there goes the bat. Look out. A swing and a miss as Montuk lost control of that bat and wound up behind the dugout. And in the stands. Number 78, so everybody's all right. Two outs here in the eighth. Mayo Acosta. It's his first plate appearance, and he takes a strike. Hander. He originally got to the big leagues with the Padres at 05. Thirty-two year old right hander delivers. Ground ball to short. So a quick inning for the veteran righty. One, two, three, go the Rays. We're headed into the ninth inning. It's four to two, Tampa Bay. Lead on to the ninth. Twins coming in for their final shot. Opening day right around the corner. Be sure and join us Monday, April 6th, when the Rays take on the Orioles. Get your tickets now to experience all the fun and excitement of opening day. Visit RaysBaseball.com or call 888 Fan Rays. The Rays took the lead three to two in the fourth. They lead four to two going into the ninth. And Jordan Norberto will become their fourth pitcher. His last big league appearance was in 2012 with Oakland. He's originally 
out of the Diamondbacks organization. And Dan Rolfing will lead it off. He took over at first base back in the sixth inning of the first pitch as a strike. Kenny Vargas started there, was 0 for 3. Oh, 2. A chase there on the fastball. One gone in the ninth. Here's Tyler Grimes. He is the left fielder. Arcia had gone 0 or 1 for 3, a single in the fourth inning. So Grimes gets his first plate appearance. Ball, no strikes. Two and oh. Balls and a strike. Roberto, 28 years old. Remember seeing him a couple of times with Oakland and a high velocity arm. With breaking stuff, he walks Grimes. And that brings up Travis Harrison. Bat for Jose Martinez. One on with one out. Nathan Carnes worked four to third. He gave up two runs in the second inning. And boy, you look at the the bullpen the rest of the way. They've done a great job. One ball, two strikes. The H came on and Got the last two outs in the fifth inning, then worked a one, two, three, sixth. Jepson, a one, two, three hitting himself. Boxberger, one, two, three. And now Noberto's in here. And he's given up a one out walk. A two, two count on Harrison. Minnesota dugout. And Alberto strikes. 
strikes out Harrison swinging. So two strikeouts here in this inning for Jordan Alberto. Now, who's Pinto? Pitch is a strike down to second base goes Grimes not being held. Ray staff with 10 strikeouts in this game. Carnes had four, Yates one. Jeps in a couple, Boxberger one, and now two by Norberto. Ball one strike. Does she have to be at the trop to get pizza with 10 strikeouts, huh? Ten strikeouts, only a, a couple of bases on balls. Bullpen has not given up a hit. One and two now. Bottom fell out of that pitch. One ball, two strikes. Now it's two and two. Grimes at second, two two on the catcher. Pinto. And the count is full, three and two, so we've got all the way down to three and two. The question is, will we see Brock Peterson, who is on deck? Number 98. Fly ball, center field. I took takes care of that one and the Rays are winners here this afternoon walking a man left in the ninth inning and the Rays have beaten the Minnesota Twins for the third time this spring it's a four to two final for the Rays their eighth win of the spring they won seven of their last eight Carnes will get the win the last go the loss before 4418 Todd Callis and the rest of our crew, Dwayne Stats. Thanks for being with us. Hope you've enjoyed the telecast. Braves and the Yankees on Sun Sports coming up. That's our next telecast on the 26th. On a beautiful day in Charlotte County, we bid you adieu. Braves winner. So long, everyone.